Hello, Sydney. Welcome back, everyone, to a new episode of Nightmare Culture. In this one, I'm going to discuss something a little unique and different, which is pinning two iconic slashers against each other. So if Ghostface and Leatherface battled, who would win? I've been doing polls recently on my community's page, and the versus polls have been doing the best. A lot of you guys have been casting your votes on who you think would win. For this particular post, Leatherface got the win. So now I'm going to say my thoughts on the whole situation. And if you enjoy these type of videos, maybe I'll do some more in the future. So when it comes to categories for this, I had to break it down in a unique way. So first off, we're going to start with size. We're going to have IQ. We're going to have weapon choice and then environment and then list a winner from there. So when it comes to size, Leatherface is obviously going to win in that category. There's no point of even discussing it, but I'd still want to discuss their sizes. Leatherface is six foot four and 300 pounds. Possibility, this guy's on steroids. Ghostface is 5'10", and going by Billy Loomis's, it's about 140 pounds, which I'm gonna say right away that is false. The guy probably weighs more likely 150 to 160 pounds. We'll go with 155. When it comes to size, Leatherface would immediately win. One punch or one hit from Leatherface's 300 pound body is gonna put Ghostface on his ass. With that said, he's gotta be able to catch Ghostface first. Ghostface being small, probably a little more athletic, can maneuver a lot quicker and has probably a lot better agility. So now I'm gonna go into IQ. When it comes to IQ, we know Leatherface is mentally challenged. In fact, there's a website called Puzzle Box Horror and they actually list uh, all the IQs of the horror slashers or the icons, which is really neat. Leatherface's IQ is 671. Like I said, he's mentally challenged. We know from one of the films that it's hinted at that he's the offspring of inbred. So his IQ is definitely not something to strive for. He is going to have to use pure brute force to end Ghostface. Now with Ghostface, his IQ kind of varies because you're talking about, if you go with Billy Loomis, that's a high school kid brain's not fully developed i decided to go with to me the master puppet of all of it which is roman bridger i'm gonna guess that he has the highest iq out of all the ghost faces he's the only one's done it by himself and he was the original og basically that got billy and Stu to do the whole slashing in the first place according to the website Ghostface iq is a 1021 so when it comes to a battle using their iq Ghostface has the advantage here he will definitely be able to think more on his toes, outsmart, and manipulate Leatherface much more so than Leatherface could. Now I wanted to go into the weapon of choice. The weapon of Ghostface is very easy. It's a knife based on a buck 120 hunting knife. It's got to be close range for him. That's not to say that he wouldn't use something different than he has in the past, but I really wanted to stick with just their most iconic or weapon of choice. Any blow he's going to land on Leatherface has to be close quarters. Now Leatherface's weapon of choice is very obvious, it's the chainsaw. Again, he has used hammers and cleavers, but going with the most iconic that he uses. A chainsaw is going to be heavier. It's going to be slower to swing, but because he's 300 pounds and has a lot of strength, he's the best one to use it. It's a longer range of a weapon considering Ghostface only has a hunting knife. So now we go into environment. Leatherface is stuck to one environment, a farm, a ranch, something that's part of the Sawyer family. Ghostface is a little more adaptive. He's been to New York, colleges, high schools. I think that he would have the advantage when it comes to environment. So who would win altogether? I gave you a list of their size, their environment, their IQ. Now let's pin them head to head. In my eyes, Ghostface would be the clear winner. I believe his IQ is strong enough to manipulate his environment around him since he is adaptive. Yes, he has to be close quarters combat basically to get that knife even close enough to Leatherface. Leatherface can take 5, 10, maybe even 16 stabs and keep going. Whereas Chainsaw gets in Ghostface one time, it is over. So Ghostface has to do his attack quickly and it needs to be precise. I just think no matter what the environment, 
Leatherface is going to have a disadvantage due to his mental capacity. He's basically just a brute. If he sees it, he's going to destroy it. So if he sees Ghostface and gets him close enough, yes, Ghostface is done. But with Ghostface's intelligence and his ability to be cunning, I just don't see that happening. One sneak attack to his throat and it's game over. But really, at the end, it's difficult to predict who would actually win a battle between Ghostface and Leatherface. It would depend on a lot of circumstances of the fight, strategies employed by each character. And ultimately, it's really up to you guys to decide who you think would come out on top. This is just my opinion. And of course, I'm also a little biased. Ghostface is one of my favorite slashers. I want to know what you guys think. With all the information or research I have kind of done on some of their stats, whether it's their IQ, their size, their environment, and their weapon of choice, who would win? Let me know that in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe.